All right, guys, so we're ready to move on to our next prompt. I know I say that a lot when I start a video, but um, I took the time while this thing was loading, uh, while the last video was loading, to go ahead and pre-annotate it. So why don't I read through it with you and then talk to you about why I did this this way, okay? It says, artists have created a wide variety of luxury objects across cultures for distinctive patrons. We're often working from within special societies to preserve the art-making tradition. The images shown feature a luxury object from your required course content. Select and identify, I crossed out identify, because you'll probably just see select or choose. Another work of art considered to be a luxury item for its patron created by a select society within that culture. You may select from the list below or any other relevant work. <coughs> excuse me. Um, <clears throat> we can see right away those are, <coughs> excuse me, just setting up our theme and telling us what we can do. Down at the bottom, I've got Al Takapu tunic and Ruler's feathered headdress. So I'm immediately thinking, okay, this is the Kowos this is the Aka elephant mask the, that was made by the Kowosi society inside the Bamaleke culture, the Bamaleke peoples, right, in the southern grasslands of Cameroon. Um, this is the Al Takapu tunic, which is the Inca culture. Um, the uh, Aklas, uh, un unclas, I think is how you say that word. These are the females that were sequestered in Cusco, and their sole job was to make the Al Takapu tunic, which was a tunic worn by the emperor with all the logos of the different kinds of tunics that could be worn in the empire. So it was pretty powerfully impressive. The ruler's feathered headdress, likely the headdress of Montecasuma II, uh, made of uh, Quetzal feathers and Cotinga uh, feathers. Those are bright, bright green and bright, bright blues. Has gold and other kinds of accents on it, and it is huge. It is so big, it almost doubles the height of the ruler when he wears it, and it makes it really easy for us to designate him if he's like standing on top of Temple Mayor or uh, in a large throng of people. We know definitely who it is to look, who we need to look at. You've got two pictures here one that is of the artwork, one that's a contextual view. So we've got lots of things we could say if we look around this thing to see um, how it's used, um, specific visual evidence beyond just the work itself, okay? So I'm gonna encourage you guys to use that when you can. All right, so going back here, I marked the parts that didn't really do it very much for us. Um, you can see the description is up front in this question. So it says, describe the visual qualities for both works that indicate these items were considered luxury objects within their culture of origin. Um, you have to know why on T1 and T2, why these cultures considered those things valuable. Okay, so I think that's fairly easy to describe using the visual evidence. With the Aka elephant mask, it's the glass beads. Um, it's the elaborate feather headdresses that you see along with the body tunics that are also um, all in glass beads, as well as animal pelts and fly whisks everywhere. These things are expensive to make. They represent trade with Europe, um, probably with coming from uh, the Czech Republic or other places where you had to specifically get this to the people who own them. Not everybody would have these just sitting around in their house because they were symbols of luxury and wealth. Um, the Al Takapu tunic, you guys realize that backstrap blooms um, uh, typically give you a very coarse kind of feel. This is very fine weaving, um, very, very tightly woven. So it almost feels like linen. And you have to know the design for all the logos as you move across the page um, or move across the loom. If you make a mistake, the only way to correct it is to go back and rip out all of your work. So highly involved. Um, has to be done in just the right way in order to be usable by the emperor. Um, it is cotton and camelid fiber, but it's the dyes that make this thing so, so valuable and wealthy. You guys remember the indigo that's in the uh, Altakapu tunic? You have to literally climb all over the Andes and get this little bug off the bottom of cactus leaves and then crush that up to make the rich, rich indigo dye. And that takes thousands of those bugs. So just the fact that you have that color on, holy cow. Um, Ruler's feathered headdress, of course, it's the Quetzal feathers. Um, the birds only grow so many of those long, long feathers, and they're seen to be kind of donations when they come from all over the Mexica Empire. Um, the Cotinga feathers, too, are quite highly valuable. Um, and, uh, of course, the emphasis on the Quetzal bird, we see that in the god Quetzalcoatl. 
um, the, the God uh, who is a feathered serpent, right? So we already see like a significance that's um, sacred as well as one that is political with people donating these materials across a great space. The Amantecas are the, is the group who have to gather those together. So um, that is a, a cohesive network of gentlemen who've been selected because they can finally craft these things. So um, one of the threads in, in uh, the Americas unit is the value that is placed on natural elements and natural things that are put together, feathers, weaving, those things are even more important than gold and silver. Um, so it seems like these are significantly important for both of their cultures for that reason. The Kuosi Society today has the job of manufacturing and, and maintaining these masks because they so are so elaborate and so um, uh, time consuming as well as uh, expensive uh, to fix. Back in the day, it was military lords who had that job. Today, it's the wealthy uh, clients in the community. So the idea is that you have um, a higher status of individual who has the job of taking care of the Aka elephant mask. OK, so um, visual qualities, um, uh, we have a lot to talk about there. Explain one formal similarity between the required work shown and your selected object that emphasized the power of a distinctive patron. These logos and symbols were specific to the ruler. Um, you could say they were totemic for his family, but they're even more specific of the specific guy who's wearing it. He doesn't even wear it in the performance. A dancer performs it for him. And it's supposed to be synonymous with his power and authority, taking the shape of an elephant, which is the you know strongest, most stable, um, perceived to be by the culture, the most you know always existent, powerful uh, king of the universe, pretty much. Um, you have other animals here, but the elephant is basically reserved for the leader. And you can see facial features that reference a human form um, with the zoomorphic forms. You see there the ears, the trunk, um, the large uh, animal features there. Um, the Altakapu tunic, um, that's the, the guy that wears this is the emperor. Nobody else gets to wear all the logos of the empire, and nobody gets to have as fine a, a tunic as that. Um, everything else is much more um, functional and less uh, less quality. Uh, the ruler's feathered headdress is a one-of-a-kind kind of, of thing. Um, so the guy that wears this obviously is marking himself out, maybe from, you know, a large plaza where something is going on. We can look at for this thing and see who the emperor is without having to know if he's a priest or, you know, just an administrator. Um, these things make these uh, uh, individuals stand out. Um, all right. So how the luxury object fulfills a specific function for its patron, I would say these dances are performed um, at specific funerals. Um, they're performed at special celebrations of the culture. Um, they're, they're danced only on occasion because you don't want to do a whole lot of damage to the masks themselves. So um, they basically support the king and his claim on power and authority by, by hosting these elaborate masquerades that are expensive to throw on. Kind of like the transformation mask and the clock walk a lot and the pot latch. But um, so his power and authority is being expressed by the fact that you're able to put on a party that big. Um, the Altakapu tunic, um, this is another identifier or marker. Whenever you look at sculpture of um, Pachacutec, um, who is the emperor who would wear this thing, um, he's always got that tunic on. And the tunic is kind of iconic within the culture. Um, the quality of the tunic is a status um, um, uh, icon. Uh, you got to remember in Inca culture, uh, each zone of the empire was required to send a certain amount of woven textile to Cusco. Um, so it was almost a form of taxation. And the guy that gets to wear all the logos of the empire in a, in a media that is like taxation basically means that he is the, the most supreme, right? Uh, the ruler's feathered headdress. We've talked about the fact that these, don these um, items are donated all over the empire. So um, the fact that you have a culture that's in charge of that and putting those together means that basically this is a symbol of his power and authority. All right. Um, so I guess for a specific function, we could say like marker in a ceremony, um, a, a marker in um, uh, everyday life, um, a festival symbol that marks the power of the patron. Lots of different ways you could go about that. Um, why did the production of items like these require a special society of artisans? Because the work is of such high skill, 
you got to have people in charge of doing those things the right way every time. It, it references the idea that you, you have enough laborers out in the field building walls, um, taking care of the herd, uh, dealing with administrative affairs, that you can have your own society who also um, uh, is, is in charge of these valuable uh, items or commodities. Um, and we can use contextual evidence from both. If you knew that these ruler's feathered headdress were made by the Amantecas and the Altakapu tunic was made by the Anklas, uh, if you knew this was Kowosi society, man, you would have that thing wrapped up in a bag. So um, let me show you how I blocked it out. OK, um, I put my description T1, T2. Um, I put T3 as a similarity about form. I'm going to have to talk about the formal elements um, that emphasize the power. And that could be the designs, the composition, the designs on the logo. The arrangement of the feathers in like a radiant like rainbow around the face of the ruler himself um, or it could be the color bright vibrant green um, uh, all of the reds and indigos and blues this thing has glass beads that are vibrantly colored um, in uh, all shapes and sizes um, so that is how you put that together um, so that's where i talked about form now we're going to talk about the how this functions for the patron and we would want to talk about either masquerades that are happening or special ceremonies like what you would see at Temple of Mayor. Why do we need artisans, guys? This is the three-parter here. And you got to answer the question and then back yourself up. Okay. So why artisans? These are not everyday items. They require special skills. They, re they use valuable, expensive media. You don't want craftsmen wasting your media uh, because that would be a horrible um, loss of wealth and power. Uh, for the Kuosi, the wealthy society is probably the only ones who can take care of such a luxurious item. While the Amantecas or the Anklas, basically, they have the job of, of making sure it's of the finest quality. So I hope that helps you a little bit. I'm trying to shorten these videos. I'm right at about 12 minutes here. Um, I will load this one and move on to the next one for you, okay? Hopefully speeding things up today.